let me show you how to make this motion graphic stinger using Blender with the default cube, light, and camera you get when you open Blender the first time. I'm going to start by taking the cube, hitting the N key, and changing the dimensions to 16 by 9 by 1. This is going to be the background that slides across the screen. Then I'm going to reset all of the values on the camera. The rotation, all to zero. Take the location information, all to zero as well. I'm going to increase the Z axis for the camera until the camera is up above the, the background. I'll come back and look at this a little bit later and adjust it if I need to. But now when I hit the zero key, this is what I see in the camera view. So everything inside this bright rectangle is what the camera is going to see. Now this large rectangle is going to be what slides across the screen. I'm going to make some adjustments on it. I'm going to click on it, hit the tab key to go into edit mode, highlight the vertices on the bottom side, go back to camera mode. Now I'm going to move those vertices. I'm going to hit G and X so they only go in the X direction. I'm going to slide them over about that far. Hit tab to go back to object mode. I'm going to drag this to about the center. I'm going to click on my camera. I'm going to move my camera up. I just want to see if I'm centered on this object. I'm not quite centered. So let me adjust that. And I want the camera to be about that high. That way I have a little bit of space on each side of uh, what the camera is seeing. Now I'm going to make this uh, background slider a little bit more interesting by putting a little bevel on the edge of this. I'm going to go back to object mode, hit the 2 to go into edge mode, and click on that bottom edge. Now from the camera view, I'm going to hit G and X because I want to move that just in the X direction. I just want to move it out just a little, about that much. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. G, X. And I make this about the same size as the uh, first one I did. Now when that slides across the screen, I'll be able to see that little edge all the time. I'm going to go into uh, the final rendering view. Now before I start moving things around, I'm going to go into a couple of settings. In my render engine uh, settings, I'm going to go down to Film. I'm going to check the box that says Transparent. That gives me an alpha channel so I can lay this graphic on top of another video. Underneath the uh, output, I'm going to change this to 30 frames a second and make it end after 60 frames. So this uh, video is going to last for two seconds. So now let's position this background where I'd like it to be in different parts of the timeline. So when we start here on frame one, I want it to be just out of the camera's view. I'm going to hit the I and location. Go up to about frame 15. Now I want this to be all the way on right here, the camera's view. Do another I location. Go over to 45. I want it to be slide it over just a little. So I'm still in the camera frame with the top surface. Do an I location. And then when it ends, I'm going to slide this all the way off the screen. I location. So now when I play this back, that's what it looks like. Now to make it a little smoother, I'm going to go into the graph editor and hit the, the period key so I can see all of the nodes. But notice how it's a straight line from here to here in the red. The 
the red is movement on the x-axis. And I would like this to be a little bit smoother. So I'm going to hit the letter T while my cursor is in this box and change this to Bezier. Now it's going to have a smoother move. It doesn't just stop suddenly, but I want to make it even more subtle. So I'm going to click the first node and then grab this handle, hit the G key and X and slide it all the way out to the end. What this does is it gives a very rapid entrance and then a very gradual slowdown. Do the same thing on the other end. Click the node, click the handle, G, X. So now when my background comes onto the screen quickly, does a very slow move across, it looks pretty good. Now let's change the background color something that represents uh, you know, my school is what I'm doing this for. So I'm going to go into my materials. I'm going to change this to diffuse. Call this the background. And change it to a nice shade of blue. Now you can see from the light here, uh, wherever the light is, it kind of changes the way that looks. Let's make some modifications to the light. Let's make it uh, more diffuse. Uh, that gives me a nice, big, bright area whenever it moves. Now, when my video starts, I want there to be a shadow from way over here on the left side. I want the shadow to be on the right side. So I'm going to start my light. Let's go say to frame 10, way off to the to the left side. So let's insert a location frame for the light over here. Let's go out to frame 50. And let's move the light to the other side of the screen. So insert location. And then when we get out to frame 60, notice the light is close enough that you kind of lose the shadow. So let's uh, move the light out even further. Insert location. So now you can see the light kind of go across the screen. That looks good. I'm going to go to about frame 30 and I'm going to put a logo on top of here. My school's logo is just the letter L and the letter B. So I'm going to type some text on here. So I'm going to control A, go down to text, and I'll move my text so it's in front of my little background here. I'm going to tab to edit. I'm going to type a capital L. I'm going to set the origin to origin to geometry. I'm going to scale this up. Now this isn't the font that we use, so I'm going to go over to the text properties, go to font, and I have the font we use saved right out on my desktop, Octane Sports Regular. That's what our L looks like. Move this up a little bit. I'm going to duplicate it, hit the tab, edit that to make it the letter B. Now our logo looks something like uh, this. You can scale that up to kind of fill the screen. But our logo doesn't look exactly like that. I'm going to hit the 7 to go to top view. I'm going to hop out to the desktop. Right here is a copy of our logo. So I'm going to drag that in as a reference file. I'm going to move it in front of what I already have. put it on top of my logo, and you can see, let's scale that down a little. The B is exactly the same, but the L, let's move it until it's lined up. It's gonna need to be adjusted a little bit. I'm going to turn off my reference so you can see the difference. Notice that the uh, 
L is going to have to be a little wider, and this little uh, toe right here is going to have to come down a little. So to do that, I'm going to have to turn my L into something I can edit in uh, edit mode. So I'm going to right click on it, convert it to a mesh. Then I'm going to go into edit mode, and let's put this in vertice mode. I'm going to highlight these four vertices. Let's bring up the reference. So I want to extend this bottom branch. So I'm going to hit G and X. I'm going to move that like that. Then I'm going to highlight these two top vertices. Hit G and Y to bring them straight down. Hit Tab to get out of edit mode. Now as a comparison, here's what I've drawn. Here's the original. That is close enough. Let's give the L and the B their own material. So I'm going to click on one of the letters, go over to Material, click New. I'll call this Letters. Let's make it an emission. Let's crank it up to 5. So it's nice and bright. And we'll just set the B to have the same uh, material. And now when we watch our video, looks really nice, but I'm going to put this back to 30. I want the L and the B to move with the background. So the sequence of selecting is very important here. Let me select nothing, then select the B, hold down Shift, select the L, finally select the background. Whatever the last object selected will be the parent. So I'm going to control P so I can get to the parent menu, select object. Since the background was selected last, anytime I move the background, those two objects that are parented to it will also move. That means I've got my animation ready to go. The L and the B will move with the background anytime I start my animation. Really, the final thing is this uh, shadow. I'm going to go into the animation panel. I've got a preview right here in final render mode. And then on the right hand side, I've got another window where I can make adjustments. You can see how high those letters are above the background. And the higher I make them, the longer that shadow is going to be. So if I want it to be a really short shadow, I can move this very close. If I want it to be long, you get the idea. So I want to make it to where it looks about like that. I can preview it until I get something I like, and I'm ready to go. If I go back to my output, notice I've selected PNG. RGBA, so the A is an alpha channel. So when this exports, anytime my object isn't uh, in, within the camera's view, I'm going to get this alpha channel so I can lay it on top of another object. So this looks pretty good. I'm going to export it by hitting Shift F12. And I have a nice stinger created only with the default components in Blender.